Welcome to the Dr. Diamond Podcast, where doctors learn from industry experts proven methods to grow their practices like the top 1%. And now your hosts, President of OfficeAutomated.com, Robert Barton, and the CEO of New Patient Group, founder of the Dr. Diamond Club, national keynote speaker and featured in Dental Economics, Forbes, and CNBC, Brian Wright. Welcome back, podcast listeners. This is Robert Barton here with Brian Wright. Hey, Brian, how are you? Doing good. How's your day going? Doing well. Uh, been a little while since we've been in the broadcast booth to do an episode. It is, at least for me, it has. You've been <laughs> literally uh, back and forth across the country several times since the last time I, we did this. So I, I got back from Canada. So just everyone listening out there, so uh, uh, listen to this for a two day a two-day trip. So went from Houston to Vancouver, from Vancouver to Nanaimo Island, and then Nanaimo Island back to Vancouver, Vancouver to San Francisco, San Francisco to Baltimore, and Baltimore back to Houston, and did that in a little over two days. <laughs> oh. It's it's interfering with our uh, with our podcast normal podcast uh, <laughs> schedule. Let's put it that way. So here we are on a Sunday as a result. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we get to work on the weekends. <laughs> Very nice. So, so but, uh, looking forward to get some content out there for the listeners. And what are we going to talk about today? Well, yeah, I think it's going to be a good topic today. It's brand awareness and the consistency of advertising. And there's a significant disconnect between how most business owners, regardless of profession, view brand awareness. Uh, they view it inaccurately. And therefore, their return on marketing, return on investment over the course of time, not, not tomorrow, over the course of time suffers. And part of that example, you know, whether you are doing a campaign internally to your existing clientele, to your existing patients, and how your staff is articulating it, all the way to your digital presence, it all goes into how people view your business. And it's why I find it important to start off with what is the definition of these things. Oftentimes when we're talking customer service, five-star customer service that is, and marketing as well, we want to make sure people actually know the definition because they're very misunderstood terms. As an example, five-star customer service, the definition of that is, is when you as a business get what it is you want from your clientele or your patients or your customers, whatever it is your business calls that, that group of people. Uh, meanwhile, that group of clients, that group of patients believes they got what they wanted from you. And that's the reason why very few companies are able to achieve five-star customer service. One, because very few people even know what the definition of it is. Uh, the other one is, is really the only way you can achieve it is through high-level training to ensure your verbiage is right and has a purpose with literally every single thing you say. Uh, when Rich Carlton uh, you know, when you go there, every word they speak to you, everything they do is for a purpose to give you a great experience, but at the same time, it's to sell you. It's to get them what they want. That's an example. Marketing is anything that can have a direct or indirect impact on how somebody perceives your business. Therefore, simply put, everything is marketing. You can't come up with one thing. Anything you say relates back to how somebody perceives your business, whether it be directly or indirectly. So the same thing with brand awareness. When we're talking about it, it's very important Everybody understands that brand awareness is simply the extent to which consumers are familiar with the qualities of what it is you offer, of your particular brand of goods or services. That's what it is. And people, consumers, don't get that. They don't understand why yours is better. They don't understand the qualities of your personalities, the quality of your goods or services. They don't get that overnight. They don't get that in a year. Few get it in a couple years. It's a constant bombardment of being in front of their face time after time. Again, because of what I referenced earlier, consumers are on information overload. They are seeing everything at once. So how do they see you as the place to be? How do they know where you are? How do they fall in love with you? So whenever they do need whatever it is you offer, you're the place they choose. That is brand awareness. And it is a flip of the mindset to go, I'm going to go out and do a quick marketing campaign, get a few patients from it, as opposed to what I'm going to do when I'm running my practice as a constant bombardment like the big boys, the Apples, the Align Technologies, those companies that know how to generate brand awareness and have done so successfully utilizing those same philosophies. Tell me, give me an example of what you're talking about with regard to this, you know, marketing and marketing consistency and, and what that means, you know, for the, uh, for a small business, a dentist, a doctor, that type of thing. Well, Robert, I mean, what I'm about to talk about is it could be a podcast in itself. So I'm going to shorten it down to just two ways 
uh, to increase your brand awareness. And two things that very few organizations do, period. Again, forget healthcare, just obviously healthcare being included, just organizations, period. If they took this advice and utilized it for marketing, they would be much better off. And the first one is education. It's called education marketing. It really, in my mind, is the only way to add value to what it is you offer uh, through the post. Obviously, pay-per-click is not going to add value to what it is you do. And remember, we talked about part of the definition of brand awareness is the quality people see in your business, in your goods or services. The quality. Okay, when you advertise based on price, that is not building the quality of the goods and services that the consumer in your community or around the country, whatever it is you may do and own, sees in your business because price can't generate quality and value. So remember, it's all about how you build the quality. How do you build that image of quality about your goods or services at your practice, your organization, your business? And that is the way you thrive in a competitive marketplace is with consumers that view you as quality, view the value that you offer. And that goes back to the brand awareness and why I'm talking about educational-based marketing. Stop talking about the service that you offer. And you, one of the things you'll notice really with these podcasts and when I speak around the country is we don't get up there and say, new patient group can grow your practice, all this amazing amount and blah, 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 blah. We don't talk about that. We give away and we talk about things that people can take back to their organization today and implement it. And that is educational-based marketing. We do this presentation around the country that's just gotten really good reviews, and it's it's the circle of lost opportunity. It's basically the six ways that you're losing money, but you can look at it differently. It's the six ways you could increase money as well. And that presentation purely gives away in six different categories, different viewpoints on how you should view your business and the things that you can implement literally today to help make a, a difference. That's educational marketing. It's the same thing of your practice constantly putting out information that can help the consumer. And it doesn't even have to do anything with dentistry. It doesn't have to do anything with dentistry. You can do six ways to keep your child safe during flu season. You, things like that. Now people, okay, oh, okay, I have a child. I'm going to click on that and they can read it. Now it happens to be from a dental practice, an orthodontic practice, a pedo practice, whatever it may be. But see, now you've got people to click on your stuff where if you try to go out and say, hey, we're the best, we're the best movers of teeth on the planet, click here. People don't care about that stuff. So it's educational-based marketing that gives something of value so people are more likely to use it, read it, listen to it, et cetera, and implement it in their lives for that matter. And that is the way you are generating brand awareness because people are seeing the quality and the value that you offer them. What can you offer the consumer on a daily, ongoing basis to get in front of them with things that they click on? And that leads to the other one of entertaining them. So these are two ways that you can increase brand awareness that I can ensure you, once again, your competition is not doing it. One, they probably don't have the patience to watch it pay off in large ways, but it's also work. It's the adult in the room. Someone inside the practice has got to be the adult in the room with the discipline to hold people accountable for doing this stuff. And that other one, when I said entertain them, you have to make posts that get them to smile, laugh, show their friend, hey, look at this, look at this. Because things about dentistry, they, they don't do that. If you are constantly posting, and that's why they go hand in hand, because if you're constantly posting, telling people what you can do for them, yeah, we, we, we put in a crown for you. We put in the best, uh, whatever, we do the best root canals. You're an orthodontist. We do the best uh, Invisalign, braces, whatever it may be. It's boring. It doesn't entertain anybody, and you don't gain a following that way. And you certainly don't get people clicking like and sharing your stuff. So therefore, you're losing brand awareness. You have to do things to entertain them. And those are two relatively simple ways. You've got to have the consistency, obviously, to make it work, but relatively two simple ways to increase your brand that very few companies, regardless of profession, do. And remember, the beauty of that is in a competitive marketplace, you aren't just competing with other practices. You're competing with all the businesses offering goods and services to consumers they can choose to spend their disposable income on. So you're up against a lot of consumer expert companies, which is why you have to be a consumer expert, but it's also why you have to bombard the internet every day with content. You have to be in front of people. 10 years ago, did you have to? No, it was starting to be that way. 20 years ago, no. 
But today, the reality of the situation is, is the best clinician does not win. The best business that happens to be a healthcare practice, that's who wins. Period. End of story. So therefore, you have to do the things to remain in front of the consumer. So educational marketing and entertain them. That has to be a part of your marketing game plan. The website, your social media, etc. It all has to be a part of the action in order to increase the brand awareness. Well, and I, I do have opinions on this. You know, we talk about social media content. We talk about people being able to connect with you. And, and we think at Office Automated, the best way to do that is with video. So for my other business, Peak, for example, we started doing video uh, again back in January of this year. And I just pulled up some stats on our internet referrals. And you can see it on the screen, but the, the users, the listeners can't. But we have uh, all last year between January and, and June, we had 36 internet referrals total. And this year, so far, the same period from January to June, this is just from doing video, integrating that with a, a drip campaign, with email, getting our the video out to our, all of our patients, our new patients, of course, get as well. It's just basically getting that content out there. We went from 36 total referrals to 124 internet referrals for the same period this, this year. And that is... What is, I mean, that's literally 400%, 500%. I mean, it's a huge number. And each one of these patients are worth uh, about $1,000 in our practice, $1,000, $1,200, somewhere in that range. So that's just video content. And again, if marketing is getting your brand out there, then people need to understand your personality. They want to connect with the people component and you know, from my perspective, uh, that's, that has a lot to do with successful internet and social media marketing. I think people do want to relate to their, you know, who they're doing business with. They want to relate to their doctor, you know, so I put videos out, you know, most of the cooking ones that I've done have to do a lot more with cooking something healthy and helping them be healthier. But I've also done little traveling videos where I fly to see my daughter and I've done you know, of course, videos on, on exercise instruction and different problems they may have at home and how to solve that particular problem. Those go over very well also. But I think it has to do with just related relatability. You know, how does this doctor communicate? How is he going to communicate with me when I come into the office? What do I what can I glean from him or her uh, before I come in? And that's the, the little tipping points that allows a person to decide to call you over the other person. And I really feel like, you know, our, our internet referral numbers have uh, skyrocketed because of this. I mean, the more information you put out there that people can relate to, the more they're going to choose you over the other, you know, the other competition. And that's what it's all about. It's about competition. I mean, there are obviously other dentists out there and obviously other orthodontists and obviously other chiropractors out there. You just need to get them to choose you over over the competition. And how do you do that? Through basically the, the title of this podcast. He's been putting out videos and content for a long time with his practice, generating the brand awareness over the course of time. And, and what happens a lot of times, but most businesses don't remain with it long enough. Uh, it's an example with New Patient Group. For years, we did content online. I mean, if you go to our YouTube station or just type in new patient group into Google, go to videos, you'll see it. Or just type into YouTube, uh, new patient group, and you'll see it. We have countless videos on there. And for years, we received absolutely no return from a people contacting us online, uh, picking up the phone. Uh, but what we're looking at online are thousands of views on some of our videos. And those are thousands of people that had no idea who we were before we started producing those videos. And now we're starting to reap the return and the reward of sticking with the plan. And Robert and Robert and his practice did the same thing, sticking with it, and then bam, it almost happens overnight with, uh, with that increase. I think that a local business is a little bit different than a business like yourself or Office Automated because people are literally searching for that solution. Their, in, uh, their intent is to look for a solution for their particular problem. Again, a dentist in a particular zip code or a particular city or an orthodontist in a particular zip code or a city or a chiropractor in a particular zip code or a city. And when they're not, not necessarily looking for a software to manage and run their business and they're not necessarily looking for you know, staff training, although they, they do uh, type that in, as we know. But there's so many more people that are looking for a solution for their problem in their particular area. So it's even easier for 
most of the listeners, if you're a healthcare professional of some sort, it's way easier for healthcare professionals to pull this off than anyone else. Yeah, you're right. And it's while it takes, when, when he says easy, everybody, it's hard work, obviously, to to remain consistent, produce the content, but it's so much easier getting people, like he said, in, in, in your area to pick up the phone and call you or request an appointment online. But if you're just a person in a, in a local area community and you're typing in orthodontist in the zip code you live in, if you do these right methods online, video production, which they don't need to be, people hear that word, I think it intimidates them because they think, oh God, I'm gonna have to bring in a video production company, it's gotta look all glamorous. And I actually teach the opposite. It should look homemade in many ways because you're a local business. You want to come across as family owned. It's okay to do videos where someone's shooting you on their iPhone or iPad or get a Canon camera, whatever it may be, and just constantly produce those videos, uh, get photos with your patients, and that stuff should be bombarded on the internet. And the videos, Robert knows a lot about this, the, the videos should be put through YouTube. A lot of people make that mistake as well, where they'll do the videos, uh, but then maybe the video goes on their website. Well, that's fine, but it should be fed through YouTube and then put on your website uh, for a lot of different reasons. Yeah, it's an interesting point. And you also have to stay up with trends because, you know, what was good in video, say, um, you know, last month or six months ago may not be what people are responding to now. So there's a big trend these days on having videos that may not even have words. You're just having some really cool music and some, you know, really cool editing. And, and now on mobile devices, they have, you know, so much opportunity and millennials are really good at this. But they're, they're, you can put together really cool videos that people just watch for the sake of watching because it's got cool music and cool visuals. But then you're, you're kind of putting that brand, your brand out there as well. And that's another uh, interesting, you know, sort of uh, avenue to take or angle to take with regard to creating video content. Well, Robert, and what that does is it proves the point of educational based and entertainment marketing. Exactly what we were talking about a little bit earlier is that a lot of the videos you're discussing have nothing to do with what people even do for a living. It, it's part of the the attraction of just what do we need to do to get people to watch. You know, it can be, I've seen videos for companies that are just the goofiest off the wall type video you'd ever want, want to watch. That's exactly how you're describing with great graphics. There's no words, but it attracts you and it gets you to watch it. And the facts are you clicked on it and now you know the name of the business where otherwise if they would have put out things maybe specific to their business, you never would have clicked on it. And it's a very different way of uh, a different mindset of what advertising, what marketing on an ongoing basis is all about. We're not saying don't put out things about your business. Of course you have to do that. But also a lot of these other entertainment type methods, you just have to do it in a competitive marketplace. You have to do it. And what you just described is proof that it works. Yeah. And then we use an, an email drip sequence to get the new content that we have out to our existing customers. And then all new customers go into that same drip sequence. And that seeds the consumption of the content because as Google sees that the, the, the content is being consumed, they think it's more important because it must be good content if people are consuming it. So that's how they elevate you in the algorithm for SEO eventually. So, uh, but again, you know, to your point is uh, on the marketing is that, that you just have to, you, it has to be out there and it has to be, you know, consistent for people to get who you are and, and eventually uh, trust you potentially enough to call and, and become a patient. And of course, that all goes back to the staff training and everything that needs to occur correctly in the practice once the people do call. But of course, that's another subject of another podcast. <laughs> so because there's so many layers to business success and it's just not a matter of, you know, doing one thing right. You, you really have to do about 10 things right at simultaneously. So it's like spinning plates. Well, Robert, you're a prime example of if you do the things that others won't, it works. I mean, your practice is the model example of if you do it like the top 1%, forgetting healthcare, the top 1%, we've talked about this a million times, the most famous entrepreneurs, doing it that way, your practice will destroy, regardless of the type practice you are, regardless of the type business you are, you are going to destroy the competition in your area for the things you've said prior. People in your area are searching for your goods and services. So it's not like you're trying to get it out to the world. 
So if you do these things with educational-based marketing, video content, consistently, keep it entertaining, do things that are fun, forget what it is you offer, just do things that are fun, have them fall in love with your personalities, have them regularly click on your stuff, you're going to win. And that's exactly what your practice has done. And and listeners, I've had the beauty of watching Robert implement all this stuff. And we joke around a lot. It's like, well, if all doctors had this business mindset, I probably, I probably wouldn't have a company, you know, because granted, we implement a lot of these things into your practice, Robert, into into Robert's practice. But it's, it's funny because they go and they do it. And then there's the adult in the room inside the practice. And that in this case is Robert. And that is what then in turn makes it work. It's why we talk about the three pillars of success, the management, marketing, training. What we're talking about today as far as brand awareness and marketing goes, it doesn't work without management functioning properly to hold everybody accountable for the consistency of putting things out. So the second, you know, Susie at your practice says, I don't want to be online. I don't want to do social media. Instead of going what most people do, okay, well, maybe we shouldn't do it then. They go, you know what, Susie? This is to better the practice. This is to better our business. This is to give consumers what they want. And you know what? In order for you to be a part of this organization, you are going to do this. You are going to participate. And I'm confident over the course of time, you're going to fall in love with this because it's supposed to be fun. See, that's the adult in the room and it's a vastly different conversation. That's also being a CEO and a leader. Totally different conversation. No different than when I don't want to work in the new patient call. Well, you're going to because this is going to help improve your career. It's life building. It's also going to help improve this organization, give our customers, our patients better service. So you are going to do it and you are going to do it consistently and you will be held accountable at the highest levels for following it. Totally different response than, okay, I understand. Maybe we should back off. We shouldn't work on it so much. And see, it all goes into creating your brand. Because again, it goes back to the people and the quality they see in your goods and services. So when they call you, your brand is how that person answers the phone, overcomes objections, etc. So it works internally, no different than it works digitally outside your practice online, as well as everything else in between. So Robert has, is a beautiful example of why all this stuff works. Yeah. So, you know, it it really boils down to what channels do we have available to us as small business owners to get this stuff out there. So we have video. Uh, Video is not hard to shoot, not hard to produce. I mean, there are some little, you know, uh, things to consider like sound and lighting and the camera and not shaking it, things of that nature. You got to get B-roll. But then there's the editing. Uh, I think that, um, you know, that can get a little bit complicated. We at Office Automated help business owners accomplish this. Then we have the, the social media you know, advertising, we have Facebook and, you know, whether or not you do static ads and video ads and so on and so forth. But then, you know, all of that feeds into your website and, you know, having a great website that people can connect with and has pictures of you and your staff on it, you know, and where people again can relate to you, you know, all these things work together in order to build an online reputation. And and dare I leave out reviews? I mean, if you have fantastic reviews, along with fantastic content, then people are going to pick up that phone and call you over your competition. And again, that's what it's all about. It's about them choosing you over your competition. And remember everybody, direct conversions is not a metric for brand awareness. I cannot emphasize this enough. Not everybody out there needs what you sell today. They may not need what you sell in a year. And that's the tricky part of brand awareness. I mean, think about it. Let's say as an example, you are pounding social media, you're pounding SEO, you're even doing postcard campaigns. Let's say you're doing all those on a consistent basis. Let's say I receive a postcard from you and at the time, I don't need a dentist, all right? Let's use that as an example, or I don't need an orthodontist, whatever type of doctor you are, whatever type of business owner you are out there, all right? Now, If you stop right there with that postcard campaign, you lost me, okay? But if you continually hit me up month after month after month while I live in that house, not only am I seeing your brand constantly on a monthly basis, which is achieving effective frequency, the consumer psychology method of effective frequency that is, which is the amount of times people need to hear a message before they're likely to act. But the beauty part is, is because you're sending it out on a consistent basis, 
you are eventually going to hit me whenever I need it. And those of you listening out there that have heard me speak all over the country or a client, you've heard the postcard story. And the postcard stories out there is that we actually recently moved when I was in my previous home. We had this dental practice that hit me up every single month for, I think it was like five years. May have been a little bit more, but pretty much five years, every month. And what happened was, is there was a day where I became unhappy with the dentist I was using. So sure enough, that same month where that happened, I got hit with another postcard from this practice. And because I had seen them so many times and they hit me at the right time, I picked up the phone, gave them a try. Now, this other story of that, and this is, I'm making a long story short, is, is they were terrible on the phones. They were terrible internally. Yet this doctor's out spending thousands on a postcard campaign every month. And that's, the, that's what you hear us preach all the time. It happens to the 99 percenters. That doctor has absolutely no idea what's going on inside his practice. He has no idea that he's losing five or 10 a month because the phones aren't answered right. And the ones that they do get converted, when they show up, they're not closing them at high levels because they're so bad internally. In all the commercial aspects that 80 plus percent of the practice makes up, and the team has no training on, especially ongoing training. And it's just this disconnect. But the point being is, is that without that doctor doing it monthly, he would have missed me. And that's what most people do. And it's no different than social media. You've got to do consistent, targeted content repeatedly, time after time after time, month after month after month. And eventually you're going to get the people that didn't need your service today, but they may need it a year from now. They may need it two years from now. Who the heck knows? Maybe they need it five years from now. But that is why you've got to do it consistently on an ongoing basis. And again, like you know we talk about, that separates the top one percenters from the 99. The top one percenters understand the consistency of advertising. That's what makes it work. It's not a return tomorrow. It may not even be a return in a year. But it's a return consistently over the course of time because you are achieving brand awareness at higher levels than the competition because I can promise you your competition, as you guys have heard me so many times say, your competition is not going to do the things we're talking about. They're just not. The standard in healthcare is, yeah, we're going to do some social media and whatever company they use makes the same post on you that they do for their other thousand clients. And meanwhile, the posts do not generate any consumer engagement because the consumer doesn't care about dentistry. That's not one to get, that's their, oh boy, Dr. Jones is posting something about teeth straightening today. Boy, I got to look at that. Do you really think people are out there doing that? No. And that's what we have to ask everybody out there is, is what is your brand? What is the image in the mind of the consumer that you are trying to create? And whatever that is, you know, everywhere on the internet needs to represent that. And that goes back to your brand awareness. But again, it doesn't happen. I, I need to emphasize this over and over and over again, because again, people don't hear what you're saying a lot of times the first few times is you almost have to have two separate marketing budgets. You have, if you're going to go do outside advertising, there are things, like I said earlier, that are going to bring you an immediate return as far as your phone ringing. But the one that is going to produce the largest return, just not tomorrow, are the ones where you are doing and focusing on your brand because the end result is going to be an enormous amount of new patients, an enormous amount of people talking about you throughout the community. But that takes significant content, consistent advertising over the course of time and having what we call the, because of the book that we tell everybody to read, Chet Holmes, The Ultimate Sales Machine, the pig-headed discipline of, look, daily, weekly, monthly, we're going to constantly produce content that nobody else will, whether that be through blogs, videos in the blogs, etc., to constantly be getting our name in front of people. And over the course of time, the results are going to be big. That's why one of the last podcasts uh, that we did, it talks about why competition is one of the best ways to grow your business. Because the things we talk about on this pod, really in every episode, but again today, are things that people don't do. These are not things in, in any business. I mean, the vast majority of restaurants go to their YouTube station. It's going to be nothing. You know, the vast majority of practices, it's the, it's the exact same way. The, practice, the vast majority of practice management companies, marketing companies, I mean, the list goes on and on. So if you choose to operate and function, again, like we referenced the top 1%, that's why competitions could, because if you do the things they won't do, you are going to win. And you are going to spread the word around the community, whether it be through your online awareness or once people are inside your door of exactly that. These people operate differently, and in a competitive marketplace, that's the only way to win. Can't win on a cheap price. Well, 
uh, hopefully this was good information, uh, gets the wheels turning of business owners. You know, you have to delegate this activity to staff members. You need to use their creative talents. You know, we have a lot of uh, resource within our staff. And sometimes, you know, you may have a staff member that just likes to do this type of thing. So uh, it's a matter of assigning this to them, having them create the content. And you'd be surprised sometimes what uh, what can happen, but you, someone has to lead the charge. Someone has to decide that this is what we're going to do. You're going to be the person to do it. Bring it to me and let's see what you come up with. You know, that's really how it starts. Well, and that's like with the staff training, it, it always goes back to the adult in the room. With, without that, it's not going to happen. And what I suggest, what we have a lot of our clients do, we try to do uh, with our own companies is it's the job description of every employee in your entire organization to produce at least one video a week. If you're a GP practice, it, it's inexcusable uh, that the hygienist can't produce one two-minute video a week uh, about whatever it is they're passionate about. Have a hygiene uh, blog that talks about uh, whatever hygienists love, whatever their passion is. Uh, have a doctor blog that talks about what your passions are. And it doesn't have to be anything to do with what you do. That's the beauty of it. It can, but it doesn't, ha it doesn't have to. And it's the beauty like with Robert, loves to cook, teaches people how to be healthy with it, generates new patients that have that same passion. And that's how brand awareness, that's how it works. But you have to have the adult in the room and everybody in the practice, everybody in your restaurant, everybody in whatever business you have should be responsible for producing one a week. And you should make it part of their job description. And when you do, amazing things can happen because they'll start doing it. Well, it's good stuff, Brian. I enjoyed the uh, the sit down today and, and getting back in the swing of things with our podcast, with your extremely busy schedule, your travel schedule. So with that, I'm Robert Barton with Brian Wright. We'll talk to you next time.